Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Series 2023, where we aim to add value to people's lives happening every Wednesday and Thursday on ebizradio.com. We chat everything leadership, coaching, and marketing, and you can catch the latest Lunchtime Series on all major podcast channels today. And to help us grow the channel, please follow, like, and share with your network, guys. Um, back on the... I was going to say back on the stage, but I mean, back, on, <laughs> back on our show, we have our co-owner and director of Rain Tree Business Coaching, Leo. How are you doing, Leo? I'm great. Thanks, Kevin. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome back to 2023 and all it has to bring. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. It's great to be back. <laughs> so you and I recently had a, a bit of a catch-up session and one of the things that uh, I think we both sort of uh, that really came up quite strongly for us was how do we how do we set up 2023 in a way that's uh, that we're not just sort of falling back into that motion because I think the will feel like it's just carried on turning and people have gone on holiday <laughs> under and <laughs> sort of had that kind of you know okay yes this is December we're supposed to be all but it feels like it's almost just rolled back into the new year and people are just, you know, uh, 10 feet ahead or 10 steps ahead of where they, you know, and it's, it, they're not really taking the time. And that's when you and I had this very specific conversation around uh, the gift of letting go. Mm-hmm. Don't you want to sort of just unpack sort of a bit of what you went through? And um, because I think it's a beautiful way to sort of set up 2023 and really get your brain on board with uh, what is that gift of letting go? It was an, it was an interesting thing. So, yeah, thanks for, for introing that. Um, so what we were seeing with our clients, and but it was kind of highlighted through my own experience as well, last year was a heck of a year. And I think people just need to pause a little bit and just – really allow that to land. It was a big year. It was a hard year. It was a difficult year. Um, I have not spoken to one business owner, entrepreneur, leader um, that didn't find it a challenging year last year. Um, And I think one should recognize that as as a first step. The second thing was that I asked people about their December holiday and I get a mixture of, oh, it was interesting. Um, Yes, it was very few people went, oh, yes, it was marvelous enough. They're all rested and restored for the new year. So it seems like yeah. there's a little bit of a wonkiness, which tells me that people are walking into this new year again, still tired from last year. And remember, we also started 2022 tired because of 2021 um, and the emotional impact of the 2022, the, the, the 2020 and 2021 challenges. We carried a lot of that. Um, turbulence, the stress, the anxiety, the trauma um, of those two years into um, 2022, we didn't listen restored either. So it tells me that this year just kind of went, bah, but you're yes. going, wait, wait, hang on, I want to say something. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I just want to preface, uh, just to add to what you're saying, I think that's one of the things that people are not cognizant about is because of 2021, those two years, we've uh, we've stepped into hyper sort of hyper chase and hyper go getter and hyper uh, hustler and you know what are the next steps what is the growth how are we doing this and how are we doing it at our hybrid and how are we trying to solve every problem mm. now mm. it's 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 uh, it's an inundated sort of ang- like a it's an anxiety that I think yeah. that people are not aware of. And I yeah. think that's a, the a, 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 client, a client said it to me so nice. He said, Leonie, like people will go until the 23rd of December at 990 kilometers yeah. per hour. Yeah. Um, people were so pushing to get back to normal in 2022. And we were just expecting everything to go right. And people were really pushing hard. Um, and all of that energy, and it was interesting, we all wanted 2023 to kind of start and all controlled and planned and calm. But it kind of started with, bam, here we go. And let's just keep on running. And it was most certainly my experience as well. Where I had very good intentions around closing off 2022 and, you know, doing the reflections, taking the learnings, doing my planning, doing my strategy, my business um, before we, we go and leave and it just we just didn't have the time to do that. So 2023 started like backwards, up fronts, up down, re hit ground running. Um 
And that first week for me felt chaotic and it was kind of echoed where I heard it coming from my clients as well. And I just went, hang on, no way. <laughs> I am not doing another 2022. Yeah. Um, and that's where our conversation picked up, where I said to you, there were some things that I did um, in that week. And actually, in hindsight, there were some things I did in December as well that just helped me to go, uh -uh, I'm, not, I'm not carrying that energy, that anxiety, the trauma, the stress, all of that energy into 2023. And I need to put pause and let all of that go and then start the year with a new intention, with a new energy, with clear goals, with clear strategies. Yeah. That's kind of where our, our, our conversation picks up, right? Um, so th the theme that I think is important for us to unpack today and, and share was the, the decluttering. So I like a mofo, tackled my house in December because we, you know, we stayed at home. So I had I had the, the beautiful space to do so. Um, but it's interesting how because I've let go of all the junk in the house because I've cre created order, I've cleaned it. I'm also a creative person that charges my battery to to play around to be creative. So I did certain creative things in the house that I just didn't have the time for. But just that letting go of the stuff created a lightness in the house, created a lightness in the office. Um, and that was really great for me. And taking that learning, um, I was exposed to a beautiful process um, that was developed by Donna McKellen, a um, well-known coach as well. She's really powerful in the work that she does. She takes you through a little bit of a process to just declutter the previous year, to pause and reflect. Yeah. And just that process to just go back and to say, okay, but hang on. What did go on in 2022? And just reflect and pause and say, right, what were the things that I celebrated? What were the things that didn't work? What am I leaving behind in 2022, right? What's that decluttering process? What are we letting go of? Um, and when then what are the learnings and the gifts that we are taking with us into 2023? And in that first week of that manicness, um, and me experiencing this year of going, hang on, I don't want to do this again, let's pause. Um, I allowed myself the space um, to just reflect on all of this in the weekend and just go, hang on. What were the things that I celebrated? What didn't work? What am I consciously letting go of and leaving behind in 2022? Because it's done. And what are the things that I'm bringing into 2023? just allowed me to let go of what I needed to let go of to start a new fresh energy and to create a clear intention of what I want this year to look like. Um, and I found that process just really allowed me to go and calmly walk back into the world. And I must tell you, last week was much better. <laughs> I was like, granted, it was much more focused. They were clear, good decision-making for the person, et cetera. Um, so I always found that that process extremely valuable. So uh, one of the things that always comes up for, for me is, uh, I mean, as and as we, you and I spoke about this, was, you know, the letting go. And uh, you were talking about decluttering things and um, what no longer serves me. Um, and very, of, uh, very often people make it a tangible or they make it an externalized thing. So, mm. you know, I don't want to live here anymore. I don't want this job anymore. I don't want these people. I don't want this relationship anymore. Uh -huh. But for me, one of the things that we also need to declutter is ourselves, right? And also, what what am I willing to want to let go of? Uh -huh. um, and when, and I think you know, from a neurolinguistics perspective, one of the very very important factors that we need to um, bring awareness to and have cognizance around is when you're saying, you know, I want to let go of something, it also means you have to unidentify with the something you're letting go of. And for me, it's a case of like, you know, letting go of anger because my anger, I find that anger doesn't serve me ever. It just doesn't serve me. <laughs> it's an emotion and I experience the emotion but what I, what I have done in the last 40 years of my life is kind of go, okay, I, I'm reactive from that emotion. Yeah. And when I am reactive from that emotion, I'm, I'm stuck or I create havoc or I create, you know, 
destruction. Because as much as I need to feel anger and it's okay, um, what I want to let go of is having to be that reactive, angry person, right? And I think the shift also has to come with um, how do I unidentify? What is the new identification of Kevin? And how do I show up? Like, how do I get up in the mornings? And what, what, you know, from a distance or when I'm aware of a trigger that's, that's, that I have with a person or a situation or something, am I aware of those? And kind of, oh, do I have a mechanism to re-identify as a new thinking, feeling, uh, behaving person, being? Mm -hmm. And do I then create a beautiful new way of identifying with having let go of that reactive anger process that I put myself through on a regular basis. And I'm, I think, you know, it's, it's a, such a necessary way to, to clutter um, not only your space and your lives and your, your, your lives and your wives, <laughs> your lives and your, your situations. And, but essentially, you know, also that mental decluttering of, this is something that is a trigger for me. This is something that holds me. This is something that gets me, like that, dis that disables me and debilitates me every single time. Mm -hmm. Like what is that one thing that from an intrinsic locus of control like that I'm actually also just letting go of, that I need yeah. to unidentify with? And I think for me that that was a big thing when we spoke about, you know, the process of what, what is it that I can also that no longer serves me? that I can actually let go of. I, I yeah. love when you spoke about it because it just reminded me, and I must say, at the time I wasn't consciously aware that this was what, what was happening for me. I used to be a smoker and, and listen to my choice of words here. I used to be a smoker for 22 years, right? Yeah. yeah. And I literally tried, and I'm not dissing it, but I tried everything under the sun and all um, mm -hmm. to let it go, and I just couldn't. It was the one habit that I couldn't let go of. And it was interesting now in hindsight, when I think back to when I was ready to let it go, I reconnected with the identity of Leone as a non-smoker, which I went through drama studies at varsity, <laughs> not being a smoker, believe it or not, I only started afterwards, everybody else was smoking, and it was no. such a thing back in the day, right? I'm so grateful that it shifted to me at this age. Um, but I was able to re-identify with Leonie as a non-smoker. And it, it was only once I did that that I was able to let go of the habit of smoking. Up until that point, whatever I tried didn't work because I still saw myself as a smoker. Yeah. And I behaved in that way and I was talking in that way and I had f friends that associated you did the whole lifestyle around this identity of me. Um, so it's definitely, this is such a beautiful way to look at what are the habits that we need to change? You know, what are we leaving behind? How can this identity really identifying with the new habit, the new behavior, becoming more identity to stick into this here with what are the healthy habits that you are taking on and creating a beautiful identity around that to let go of the other stuff that, like you say, no longer serves us. I just, I just want to just, for those who are listening out there and for those who are not understanding the concept of your identification. So please, just from a, because some people go like, well, this is who I am. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Unidentify with me. <laughs> so, you know, just to, one of the things that we as humans do is we, we generalize the lead distort information at any given time, but our brain subconsciously is picking up. 2.4 billion bits a second at any given time. So we go through a whole filtration system and it breaks, our brain really literally breaks down chunks of information. And what then happens is that information still gets filtered through your value system, your belief system, your memory decision-making processes. So your meter programming, right? So when, when I start understanding what my meter programming is and I start, and that's why when I speak of mental decluttering is a, a belief system or a conversation I had with my mother when she's like, because I was a rebellious teen said to me, you know what, you never going to amount to anything because you just, you're such a difficult child. 
that conversation, those moments like that are memory decision-making processes. It's part of your meta programming. And there are there could be many of those conversations that you've had, but being able to kind of go, is that your voice speaking when you hear that voice speaking, or is it someone else's voice speaking? And suddenly we we, we start filtering life through life-defining moments like that. So your meter programming. And it could be a belief system, but it could be your mother's belief system or your father's belief system, your brother's belief, my brother's belief system around me that I coined for many years was, oh, Kevin, you're just lazy. You don't, you, you don't you want to work because you're just lazy. Until I really saw the evidence of what I was doing and what I was achieving, I was going, hell man, I'm this, I'm everything but lazy. Like I, I just, I need to find what I was good at, right? Um, so the identification of, uh, of, of self really comes from the meter programming that really elicits an actual emotional process for you. And when you start decluttering that, and you and that to me is when people recognize the emotional state that they move into, that your emotions are a beautiful way of recognizing what's about to happen. So if I know that I'm feeling really bad, because you know we know what our feelings are, you can go, okay, cool. I don't, I don't, I'm feeling uneasy, or I'm feeling nervous, or I'm feeling a feeling. I'm not sure of this feeling. I'm like, what is that? Become curious about yourself. Become curious about feeling, because then you also take you take more cognizance of the experienced feeling that you're having. And if this feeling is something you you don't like associating with, you need to understand where it's coming from and what the trigger is. When you're starting to interrogate self to that degree, you can you can then start reintegrating into a new version, new identification of what it is you would like to feel in this moment. So recognizing the thing you don't like, which is a beautiful contrast to the thing that you do like. And when you know what it is you don't like, you also know what it is you want and you do want. And if you don't know, you need to discover it. And I think, you know, it's that, that conversation where sometimes people or um, psychologists refer to the pain body, which we've spoken about too. Sometimes the pain that we associate to, we have such an identity connected to the pain that me without pain doesn't make sense. Right. So it's, again, decluttering and understanding and being in, in interrogating the pain to kind of go, where is this coming from? Where is it stemming from? What is the root cause? Um, and I know you've also been through a process like that recently where you've, you know, had a, 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 a root cause that was causing stuff for you that you unidentified from. Don't you know, just sort of give, I mean, you don't have to give, give us the details, but <laughs> give us the sort of just on how you, how you took that learning because i think that identity unidentification of something mm. then it becomes the consciousness awareness of that thing and you're not you're not just anger you're not just uh, you know um and i say it's in the language because we often say i'm angry and it's like oh i'm feeling angry i'm not angry mm. not the emotion of anger yeah, yeah. I, I, I do want to talk about a different um, example because I think this is one that's quite relevant to, to listeners and, and people out there is just speaking around how these belief systems are created and how we then create that identity around that um, in a practical way that I've seen this playing out recently with a client of mine where she had a very thriving business um, as a business owner um, and then suddenly it all fell to pieces. And when I spoke to her, she says, you know, she's in the beauty industry and currently people don't have money. And that's why my business is not thriving. You know, the beauty industry is one of those things that is a second the economy goes a little bit tighter. This is the place where people start saving money. And I was listening to her and I, and I found it quite curious because moments before that meeting, I walked by Sorbet in one of the, the malls and then I went to go do my shopping and Sorbet was just bursting. <laughs> Was bustling and bustling, full of people, right? And so <laughs> and so and cheap. And yes, <laughs> you know, I find it very curious. So digging deeper, what mm. we've realized here, there was a very deep ingrained belief system that she had picked up from dialogue, from conditioning, growing up as a child around money and her ability or her worth 
to be able to make a lot of money, to be wealthy, um, as a woman to be successful, as a woman to be abundant with money. So there was a lot of limiting belief systems that she started adopting from a very early age as we listening to the language of money that we hear from our parents, that we hear when people speak, right? Oh, the economy is tight. Oh, we don't have money. Oh, we're not rich. Oh, we need this. Oh, we, you know, all of that stuff. Un unconsciously, we start picking up these belief systems. And then what happens is now the actions starts confirming all of this, right? And we're looking for the evidence in the world. And what she's seeing in, in her world is, She's losing clients. You see, it's true. They don't have money. Um, and they tell her, you know, I'm, I'm cutting my budget. So the evidence in the world that she is choosing to see confirms that bias belief around people don't have money and therefore um, I cannot have money. Yeah. And suddenly she's not valuing her service. She's discounting. Um, she wants to give away a lot of stuff for free. She's offering her... Uh, more cost-effective products, the clients that can actually um, afford the more expensive products. And as a result of all of this, financially she is battling. And now all of this has confirmed that she is not worth being abundant, um, abundantly wealthy. Um, and it's such a beautiful example of how this starts playing out. And now all of her languaging, all of her habits, all of her actions just continuously in that circle keeps on confirming to her that she's not worth being abundantly wealthy. Yeah. And it becomes that identity. Yeah. It's her, her identity. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, sorry, this is also what I wanted to eat this because you spoke to that emotion that is, it's kind of the red flags to, to help us just to realize that mind is holding on to something that is not true. So whenever she spoke about this issue and, and her finances and her business, she started getting very emotional and yeah. started experiencing pain. So she would cry a lot. Um, and that is such a beautiful red flag to say your body is in dis-ease. It's a red flag to say that the mind is holding on to a belief that is not true. And that's always for me that I've learned the, the, the first kind of, Red flag to say, ah, Leonie, hello, <laughs> go look here. Here's, here's the belief system that's causing you pain. Go look at that because mind is holding on to something that is not true. Yeah. Um, and when we dig deeper and deeper and deeper through the coaching conversation, she realized that the actual challenge is, is not that people are not spending money on, on beauty because it's not true. <laughs> they are. Um, it's just find the right market who is. Um, the, the real issue here was the belief system that she was holding onto that she needed to declutter. She needed to let go of the belief system, um, that limiting belief that was holding her back. And that, and that belief was that I am not worth it. Yeah. I don't deserve this, right? And when, yeah, we're in that process now of letting go of all of that so that she can start rebuilding it and create the, the, the future that she wants for herself. Um, you know, another thing as you're talking now, you know, one thing my, my, I think my dad always spoke about, um, my mom also, my mom was a bit of a neat freak. She was a crazy neat freak. So she, everything had a place and everything had to be in the place. And she sounds wasn't. like a little one on the Enneagram, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if, if it wasn't in its place, um, we would all know about it. Of course. <laughs> but, but what she did say, she always said, you know, which I always took for granted, and I was like, oh, you're being all religious, mother. She would always say, you know, cleanliness is close to godliness. And today I, I understand it completely different, that it's not, yeah. a, it's not a religious saying. It's got nothing to do with godliness or religion, per se. Yeah. It's got to do with, you know, when things are in place, when things are in order, when things are, when you know uh, what what the lay of the land looks like, um, as much as a, as much as it um, uh, translates from an inner world to an outer world, it works, you know, both ways. Yeah. So very often, when people are experiencing chaos, and if you did start twenty twenty three, uh, you know, in chaos and it's mm -hmm. all over the show. Um, stop the bus, climb off the bus and kind of go, okay, what's this bus? Let me just check, you know, if mm -hmm. I'm on the right mm -hmm. bus because 
you know, the lay of your land, the, the cleanliness, the godliness that starts yeah. with me. It's an internalized process. And I think um, that's so one of the one of the points that we have here is, you know, um, letting all the expectation of what it's supposed to be like. Oh, I found that so profoundly powerful when you spoke to that, spoke to that one you just share, because that's something that I never considered. And I realized that that would really shift the way that I go about doing things. So won't you please share that story? Which which one are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone <laughs> where you sneak around that letting go of the end result, letting go of that expectation that you have on others or the expectation on yourself, right? Well, yes. I mean, so so I mean, I've I've had a, this conversation quite a quite a few times. That's why you know, it's sort of a, quite a vast conversation. But the yeah. expect the expectation is. Um, you know, letting go of the expectation really puts you in a position of of moving through the the holding on to fear very often because it's very fear based sort of like oh I want this thing to happen there and what if it doesn't happen you know mm -hmm. and when you're stuck in the fear and you're stuck in the emotion of fear and um, it it it's it's quite guttural you can feel it in your core right. But the moment you kind of go, do you know what? Um, I'm going to do my absolute best. I'm going to do what I'm do. I'm what I'm good at, and uh, I'm going to just do and keep going. Keep, keep the consistency of what I'm putting out there, and I'm just going to go and let go of the expectation of what I have of what this next moment is supposed to be like. The yeah. expectation of what the relationship I'm in is supposed to be like. And the expectation of the client when, you know, he's supposed to do X, Y, and Z. The moment I put it all out there as an expectation, it's an external thing, right? Um, so I'm almost leaving my happiness, my peace, uh, my calmness, my my inner barometer of, of flow to other people and to externalized situations. The moment you let go of the expectation and you kind of go, no, I have an absolute beautiful intention that I'm set with. And I've set this intention and I'm, this is it. Um, it feels right. It connects in my mind. There's mind, body and behavior connected to that intention. And when that is the, 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 the output of um, how you find yourself on a consistent basis, um, who knows what the expectation is? It might even be better than you thought. And the moment you get there, you kind of, it's so much easier on that side of making that decision. Mm. Yeah, you step back into flow and ease yeah. and, and trust and faith. I, I, I think, you know, where this started playing out for me was um, as, as a coach, you know, um, we do chemistry sessions. So for our listeners, um, coaches would meet with, with coaches and a coach would choose two or three people to meet with for a chemistry session. And and you meet up with someone and you see is there's chemistry, are you aligning? Um, is this something that the coach feels comfortable with working and so with, with the coach? And when I started this many years ago, I had, you know, I have to have this, it's almost like a new business meeting, right? And I have to get this work and I have to get the percentage right and I need to get my return on investment and throw la la, you can see the business behind me. Um, and they failed. And I think when I started the process, I had 10 coaching sessions and not one landed. And I thought, oh my greatness, I'm the worst coach on planet Earth. I cannot <laughs> do this. I'm doing everything wrong. What is wrong with me? Um... And then my business partner had this conversation with me where you, you step in, like you say, with that beautiful intention and you are open and you have the conversation and you see if you connect and then you let go of the outcome. Yeah. And you trust that the right person will choose you. And it's fascinating how my business started shifting when I started implementing that, where I meet people and I also see, is this someone that I connect with, Right. Um, is this right for me? Do I have the right skill set, expertise, experience to really bring value to this person's life? And and they obviously look what they are looking for. But the second I let go of that, it has to look this way and I have to get that. It started flowing. Um, and I think 
And me saying this sounds as, as, a, as a little bit of a control freak, right? I, I look at the world and very often go, right, we need to get to from, from point A to point B, and this is how we need to get there. And we try to control it. And we try to control the outcome. Yeah. And not realizing what we are doing in that process is that we are missing out on opportunities. If you let go of the outcome, you are open to with ease and flow flow and you are able to be agile and you are able to pick up other opportunities and allow it to go to, like you say, very often it brings something bigger and better. I've, I've worked with clients where initially I had a very clear plan of where I needed to take them and then it didn't quite work. Um, and then I've realized, but I need to let go of this outcome that I've created for us. Let's go explore. Let's have the conversation. Let's see what else. And it's amazing how when you let go of that expectation, it just opens up to possibility. Um, and it's so freeing, right? It feels light and freeing. But as, you, as you're speaking now, don't you find that <clears throat> by holding on to the expectation, we're just unhappier? Completely, not knowing it, because I feel I'm okay, because I'm, you know, I've got everything under control, but I, but I don't, <laughs> but I think I do. Absolutely. I mean, there, that, and you're miserable. Yeah. That one conversation that I shared with you, and I, and it's completely tongue in cheek, um, when when the guy says, "Can we all just start those meetings with a, uh, like, uh, just saying that? Just please remember that everybody's going to die, and nothing is really important. So stop <laughs> being so serious about it, right? Yeah. And when you when you take it into you know, put it into frame, and you kind of go, actually, you know what? When you're holding so so tightly onto this expectation, and and what if it doesn't happen? Then oh my, then you know what's going to happen to me and when you just let it go and you find a bit of easiness and less control around that yeah. um, and tap into what feels good uh, and resonate. And I, I often steer away from these conversations and I'm not going to do it anymore. So I'm just going to do this, put it out there. You know, from a quantum physics perspective, we have to realize that we are magnetic, we are vibration, we are frequency. And if you want 2023 to, to really be in flow and really set it up for success, you need, to, you need to be at the vibration and frequency of what that feels like and not looks like, what it feels like. So if you're not in a frequency and a, a conscious awareness of what feeling good like and a vibrational energy of how do I connect to what feels good like more consistently, more actively? Mm. Uh, we won't get to that output that you're really wanting to, to, to achieve. But and this you have to be me, cognizant of it. Yeah, and this reminds me of the importance of what all of this then brings you when you let go of the outcome and you let go of the control. Yeah. You are able to be present. Yes. And like you say, vibrate at that energy level and see opportunity. But because you are present, um, you are experiencing the gifts of the moment and the opportunities of the moment. And we are at ease and in flow and we're experiencing life with joy. Right? <laughs> it sounds so simple, man, Kevin. <laughs> no, but the only, I want to add to that. I want to add to the fact that that's, that's the truth, right? Yeah. So often people, what people are doing is we, we're putting this thing right now. Tomorrow is not happening to you and I. Right now you are on the other side of the screen and we're having this conversation right now. That's what's happening right now. Yeah. My bank balance and my, the, my 53 clients and the coach, not, none of that is what's happening right now. What's happening right now is you and I are having this conversation. Nothing else is happening. Yeah. So it does. It does bring you back to the present moment and kind of go, um, when, when now would be a good time for you to get it that you're supposed to be present? You're supposed to be. You're supposed to be present. You're supposed to be in this moment and really make the most of this moment. Um, and when you and I discussed, we started the conversation going, oh my goodness, like, I'm a really nervous. I was like, what have you talked about? This, co this conversation feels so heavy. But it's not. You know, now that we're here, it's a, it's a completely different feeling for me. And I'm kind of yeah. going, 
That is the point. The point is we, we are responsible for how we do every minute of every day of every hour. And the more we can tap, tap into that and let go of the things that just don't serve us and kind of just recognize it from a distance and see the cues, see the cues on its way. You know, when that person comes around the corner, you go, yeah, this is me turning right. Mm-hmm. When you see it coming along, make note of what it is you don't want, that you don't want in your world anymore. And sometimes that is letting go of relationships, letting go of friendships, letting go of the job, letting go of, um, you know, one of the conversations I had with you is what I thought being a dad would be like. I've had to let go of the idea of what that means to me because, Mm -hmm. and it's hard, it's heart-wrenching, like it's tearing my heart apart. But my my daughter's turning into this most amazing like specimen like i'm so honored to be her father it's an absolute blessing and i'm so grateful to be even part of it but i want to just hide here because i remember you speaking about this the first time and, and what you mentioned here was because you were able to let go of that picture in your mind of what this should look like yeah you were able to in those moments when she is with you be fully present in that moment and and you still spoke at how you just laugh and laugh and laugh and how this pure joy you can now fully experience with her because you let yeah. go of that belief system of this is what it needs to look like and this is what society tells me of what it needs to look like. Um, how freeing that was for you, right? Exactly. exactly. And, and I think that's why, you know, it's um, it amplifies the relationship that I have mm. with my daughter because when I'm with my daughter, nothing is happening. I'm I'm doing me and Balin. This is you. That's it's our mm. time. This is what we're doing, right? Mm. And it's precious and it's lovely and it's I, I I'm enthused by it, and and it's so, such a genuine gift to be in that present moment when you're just doing that thing, yeah. and I think that's the bringing it all back to decluttering. Yeah. is that's what decluttering does for us. So we've yeah. gone on a tangent, absolutely, but mm. part of that tangent is it's all of that, that decluttering and and really taking cognizance of what 2023 should be like for you and what you what the absolute intentional way that you want it to flow should sit within you from a from a brain language perspective yeah. so that you have an identification of how you would like to show up every single day you have some kind of plan you have some kind of cognizance of how this should flow and unfold and and recognized emotional vibration and frequency to keep it steady. I, I want to I I'm want saying. to add here because what it what it reminds me of is something that my business partner brought into our business is having a feeling compass to help mm. us stay true to this. So we are our personal lives, but also for our business, we have a feeling compass. And if working with a client or if working with a supplier doesn't feel in this way, it's a very clear indication that there needs to be some decluttering. Um, And we're in the process now of of letting go of a supplier that served us very well and and, and we love them dearly, but it's it's getting hard and that's the red flag for us to say it needs to change. Um, and we do the same thing with our clients. We're looking at a client currently saying, this is not working. How can we do this? Yeah. So just to bring it all back to, to where we started and just in a very pragmatic way, um, it is really looking at your life and saying, right, what is serving you and what do you need to let go of? What are the boundaries and what do you say no to? Whether that's stuff, relationships, belief systems, people, things, um, what is no longer serving you? What are some of the identities that you created through belief systems that you need to let go of to really step back into becoming present in your life and living your full life um, in the moment and experiencing lightness, ease, flow, joy, and ultimately, most importantly, is gratitude. Um, that really yeah. just creates that energy of abundance that starts flowing in our lives. Can we do a quick practical example of how to go into move into sage? Now, sage is a is a sort of uh, 
brain mind frame mm -hmm. of really getting your brain sort of on board with what your body is doing right now and really cutting out the noise. So one of the things that we do is you obviously take a nice deep breath. We start with breathing, breathing because breathing is a life force of what we as humans that we need. Um, taking a nice big breath three or four times. Then you want to do what you want to do is you want to start paying attention to start your fingertips and just move to bring all your attention into your fingertips. And you literally take your finger and you feel the tips of your thumb and recognize what the tips of your thumbs feel like. It is, it's a strange little exercise, but have you, you know, I often feel to ask people, have you ever just felt the tips of your thumbs? The next part is take your 10 fingers and put them slightly or just like very lightly on top of each other and feel what that feels like, like each finger touching each finger. Now, as you're paying attention to that feeling, pay attention to what it feels like to breathe in a full breath of air and then breathe in. Really going into that moment of breathing. Right. Then feeling while you're doing this, just feel how your bum is feeling in the chair that you're sitting in. Like we never pay attention to how the seat is actually touching our bodies and which part of the seat is touching my body. Is it my shoulders, or my arms, or my back, or my, uh, and my, is my foot touching the chair? How is that body touching an object? And then move down all the way to your feet and then quickly to count your toes. And then just pay attention to each single toe. And very often people go, you're counting your toes? Yeah, like literally count each toe and bring the attention to your toes. And then lastly, what you can do is just look around the room and pay attention to a color that you don't often pay attention to. Find one. Find a color that you like that you often don't pay attention to. Now, when you do that, a, we literally did that in two minutes. Right? That's a very, very short, shortened version of this. But by doing that, uh, were you thinking of your bank balance? Were you thinking of, <laughs> you know, the boss that you had three years ago? Are you thinking of that, uh, that argument you were having with Mr. Man over there you know, last week? When, none of that's coming into your mind when you're doing that process. You literally, yeah, doing this in your body right now. There's a very practical, very simple tool to get your brain out of the chaos into a present moment. And by doing this as a practice, you can ongoingly doing this every day. You can do it every hour for that matter. Where you just bring yourself back, bring yourself closer, and then from there, get back to your day. Because that in itself creates a lot of clarity, a lot of focus, a lot of sense of self. It feels a lot easier when you're here and not externally driven. And now I'm finished talking. Thank you very much. <laughs> but that was such a lovely, lovely exercise. Thanks for sharing that one. <laughs> Guys, so we'll be back um, next, uh, not next week. I was going to say next week. Uh, see, we have such a good conversation. We might as well be back next week. But uh, Leonie will join us again in February. Uh, Leonie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having this conversation and thank you for going to weird and wonderful ways of conversation that you know, <laughs> uh, people sometimes avoid. Guys, the gift of letting go, if you want to find out more of us, check our links and our uh, information in description box below. Um, you only could see have a wonderful week and I'll chat to you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. To our listeners, may your, your 2023 be light, be present and abundant. Thank you, Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks so much. Chat soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.